everybody. Good afternoon. It's about 2.30 and I uh, just had a meeting with our curriculum committee and I'm getting lots of interesting questions and um, emails that have a sense of anxiety to them. And so I figured this really would be the best way for me to share um, what's going on to the best of my ability and also to um, let you all know that everybody is in the same place. So um, all we can do is to do the best that we can uh, with what we've got. And just know that we have to do the best that we can as best as we can. So, um, but anyway, I figured I wanted to talk a little bit about the question about curriculum first, and then I actually wanna show you a couple of things, which is why I'm using Zoom to record this so I can share my screen. Uh, I am getting uh, a sense that there is still lots of anxiety about what needs to happen. And um, so I figure if you heard my voice and saw my face and heard the same thing at the same time, that everyone would be at a better place, hopefully. Um, so the superintendent conference days that you all have uh, managed to uh, work through all the sessions, um, there are sessions for everyone. And um, hopefully you were able to uh, garner some new information and some better ways to work through curriculum. So let me back up and say that all of those areas or hubs, SEL, social emotional learning, CLRI, the multilingual in my identity, the technology, all of those are separate hubs. And the purpose of that was to kind of lay some sort of foundation for everyone. That to be honest with you, the district totally understands and does not expect everyone to start teaching curriculum that first few days of school as there will be a lot of, most likely some chaos, um, a little bit of confusion, young people starting school, there may be some trauma, there may be some technolo uh, techno technology glitches. Um, there may be all sorts of issues. So the, the, the thought behind offering those hubs was to say that at least this is a place where everyone can start. We start with the, the, those intrinsic needs of children and we work our way through that. Now, um, some, some of your principals will want you um, to do the lessons that were offered in some way. Some principals will want you to do them exactly the way they've written them. Some principals will give you some sort of autonomy and allow you to make some choices to align with those kinds of uh, curriculum that were offered. For the most part, Encore teachers will be teaching or will have uh, an alignment to the my identity piece from the multilingual. That's, that's where we're kind of fitting in. That's not to say that you can't also work with some CLRI stuff or what have you, but that is just a recommendation, a suggestion by the district to make things a little easier. But I want to reiterate that it's a, a, a suggestion your principal may choose not to do that. So your principal may say, well, Michelle Augusto, I know you do a lot of identity work anyway in art, which I would say all of us do, um, theater, dance, and visual arts. And Michelle Augusto, all of you really are good at social justice issues, which many of you are, and you tie art, uh, arts education and all sorts of things to culturally responsive teaching. And your principal may say, just make sure that whatever you decide to teach, once you get to see your kids and know your kids and work out some of the kinks, that your lessons are aligned to these topics. Your principal may also say that no, you're gonna do this lesson as written. <laughs> so that's where that is. So the direction is coming from your building. I am just here to give you some ideas and supports, no matter which direction your building goes. So in saying all of that, 
I want to show you, I'm gonna share my screen, and I wanna show you exactly what you can do and where you can find things. So I sent an email and on Facebook and um, our workplace or space links to resources. The resources that I have shared are mostly on the website and on Schoology. They're there for you to access. They've been there, most of them since August 31st, August 30th, once we got an idea of what was going on. And then I've been adding along the way. So I would suggest that you look at those resources relatively frequently, not to the point where you're going crazy and causing yourself uh, anxiety, but to know that there will be things that are updated. So you may see in Schoology an update notice, or I may just send an email sharing what has been updated. So for the most part, I wanna show you the, the website first. And on the website, you're going to see that it looks different now, starting a new year and you'll have um, the icons or the buttons right here. That'll take you to fewer places than before. The one place that does not have anything in it yet is the arts events. It has the old calendar and I'm working on that to update that. And on the side, you can also obviously go and figure out what you need. Um, we're gonna go to curriculum, which you can click here or you can click here. Here in curriculum, you're going to see how we have created some cleaner space so you can identify what you need. Currently, dance and theater is under construction. And we should have one grade level in by the end of today. I'm very excited about that. Um, well, certainly by September uh, 7th. So that will make me feel great. But since we don't have a lot of stuff in there right now, I'll open this up. And, and you're going to see that we have updated many of the curriculum and that it looks different. So um, there may be some tweaks because we, you know, when you're trying to get everything done and you realize time is short, we, you know, there are going to be some, some weird things happening, but for the most part, they're up. And I'm just showing you kindergarten and what in general the curriculum is going to look like. So you can see you have your standards and you have your QR codes for your uh, ELA standards and for your math standards. You can use your camera, your students can use the camera and take a picture of standards if you need them. And you will see that we have special tips, we have critical thinking, not that uh, those types of topics will be familiar to you from the old curriculum, except it looks a little nicer. Hopefully all the background stuff isn't too distracting. We try to just make it prettier as well as uh, functional, as well as relevant. So you'll see all of these wonderful things. We have art history and cultural contributions, and we have the assessment and portfolio review, and we have end of year expectations, all of that in the beginning. And then at the end, you'll come to this page, which is basically the unit. So this is the drawing unit for kindergarten, and you will see our focus artist, textbook alignment, and the outcomes, okay? And that continues through painting, that continues to media, that continues through 3D, and that continues to graphic arts, okay? So hopefully that's something that you will find much more teacher-friendly, much more exciting for you to look at, and you can see you can pull whatever grade level you need. You don't have to print out the whole really dense and robust curriculum. We also have a section where we have a CLRT aligned artists. And so my dance and theater teachers, I would like to add a section for you. So um, there are some artists, uh, theater uh, 
actors, directors, dancers, choreographers that may or may not be well known. I like to find the ones that aren't well known and that have made a mark somehow on society. We can put that in here. Um, further, you're going to see that there's a section called Teaching Remotely Arts K-12 Instructional Guides and Resources. You'll remember, you'll see this, then you're in the right place, and you'll remember this from over the summer. And in here, you're going to see that we have four areas that you could click into. The first area is the Instructional Guides for Remote Learning, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And then you have the texts, some videos, and some music museums um, and performance tours. And then here you will find some guides that talk about synchronous and asynchronous because there are people who don't know, who really don't understand it yet or just they get confused and so this helps kind of navigate that. There is also an infographic which is pretty cool that you can use for yourself and for your kids so they can understand what you're talking about because we sometimes like using fancy words and uh, we don't realize not everyone understands those fancy words. And then in here, for the, our youngest babies, I did create some um, visual art packets that you may want to use. Um, I only made those just in case we have babies who still do not have um, devices. Sounds like we have, everyone has a device, but this is there to be used, okay? And there are all sorts of neat things that we can do. And I hope you like that because um, I did that without much help. And so, and I haven't taught babies in a while. So the next thing I wanted to share with you is, um, oh, let's see, did I skip something? I think I may have. Uh, this, this. Right here. So this will show and show you and give you I, what it is as guidance. So suggestions, ideas about how to make your online teaching work. So it's not curriculum. This is just what can you do to talk about development and application of skills and techniques in a synchronous um, setup and a small group synchronous setup and an asynchronous setup. And so here are some ideas. I added some links right in there so you wouldn't have to search for them. And it goes down to these general over uh, umbrella kind of concepts and um, how best to teach those areas in these three categories. Okay, so that's that. All right, so um, back to this. You can continue to kind of uh, explore and see what this is about. Oh, and I do want to show you this thing, which could be helpful if you're trying to do some, um, um, some asynchronous teaching. And if you want them to read something or pull something out, you have access to the Smithsonian, which Smithsonian and the Smithsonian magazines are amazing. Some vocabulary terms for art. Um, American Theater Magazine, my favorite, favorite, favorite um, resource, hyper, aller, uh, hyper Allergic, and a dance magazine here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on from here. And so explore and have fun. If you find that something isn't flowing right, let me know. Uh, I really worked hard on trying to organize this in a way that seemed to make sense. And um, you let me know. I'm sure you will. So the next thing I want to show you is Schoology. So I told everyone the resources were in Schoology. Some people seem to have a hard time finding resources in Schoology, so I'm going to go through that for you right now. And if you go into the BPS Arts Educators group, which all of you should have access to, and new teachers, I think I, I added you on. And if I didn't, let me know, and I'll find you, or you can always Ask to be a member and I'll accept you in. You click on Department of Arts or PPS Arts Educators. Oh, and Rachel already posted something. She's always on top of it. So thank you, Rachel. Looks like a survey for kids. On the side here is where you see your resources. 
And when you open that, you're going to see that I have cleaned this up and organized it in a way so that you can access what you need. So in here, you're going to see back to school resources and remote instruction supports, the Davis publication information, and other resources that you can use, um, magazines and the like, CLRT resources, art exhibition, art field trips, and the archives from the past. I also have a reopening strategy up here, people. So understanding that at the end of the day, your building principal will guide you and tell you what you need to do as far as your teaching is concerned for the moment. Know that I have added this piece here so that at least you have a better understanding of what should be expected of you. And so in here is a little explanation about the kinds of platforms that you should be getting familiar with. Schoology, Microsoft Teams, BPS Department of Arts YouTube channel. If you have things that you're doing, please create a channel. Let me know about it and we'll subscribe to it because I am a believer in sharing and that all of you have incredible expertise in certain areas that others can utilize. And that is what education is all about. It's helping one another and teaching one another. And BPS Department of Arts webpage, which I already showed you. Um, so in here, there's a little bit of stuff that I'm talking about. I want to talk about this right here, about these art kits that people seem to be slightly confused about. I think we've cleared it up yesterday with principals, so hopefully they've cleared it up with you if you haven't figured it out. And about a couple of weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago, I put uh, posted on Facebook and on Workspace, um, and I believe I emailed um, that we have these small little bags. They're not that big. They're about five by seven in size with a little drawstring so everything keeps nice and safe in there. That can be used to fill, um, to create some student art kits. Student art kits are kits that I have purchased. They are not kits that have been donated. They are not kits that um, I have to give away. The bags I have to give away and what I would like for all of you to do as I fit in this category with you is that I know many of us do have a lot of stuff, even though sometimes we don't think we have a lot of stuff. Our nature is to kind of hoard things and that's what art teachers do and I'm cool with that because I'm one of those. You've seen my background here. And what I'd like you to do since we have a new supply since March of 2020, and I don't expect us to be going back to school anytime soon. There should be some supplies that you have available in your schools, in your classrooms, that can be divvied up in some sort of judicial manner and that can be given away to children. I am not telling you to give away your brayers <laughs> or scissors. I know those are items that are hard to come by, but you can give away crayons and you can't give away pencils and you can't cut down paper into small pieces and staple them along the, the, the what we all call a spine on the side of the paper and make a visual journal very simply. We all know we can do these things. You can give them a few markers. You can give them some modeling clay if you have it. Just throw that stuff in there. Just throw it in there. Potpourri of art kits and pass them out because I would rather have our kids have something than nothing. And since we have no idea about a time schedule for, for them to get back to school, and my own personal, Michelle Agosto, personal thought is that we won't be back until uh, December, which I think I said in March, um, then I want them to have something. And so for those of you who are concerned about not having anything when you get back, I would say let's worry about the now and then when you get back you can either ask children to bring back the supplies maybe you'll be lucky and or we can have some well, you, have, you have your three hundred dollars coming along so think for you know do some forward thinking here and use that three hundred dollars for when we return and you can replenish some of those supplies i know that your principals still are, have to support your budget and your program so Again, think forward, long-term, and use some of that funding 
for replenishing in the spring to next year. Okay, so we all have something to give kids. We haven't been in school since March. There are supplies in your classroom. And if you don't have supplies, if you're just, if you were art in a cart and you really had nothing in the first place and your partner teacher at your school is not being very friendly and sharing with you, then let me know. And I do have some supplies that I use for summer camp that I'd be happy to give you. Okay? All right. So that's that. Last um, here is a reentry plan, and this will talk about all the things that you need to um, think about, review. You want to look at the D DPS art page, that's that before school starts. Um, some information if you need to share with us, make sure you're getting our emails, make sure you're getting Schoology, first week of school, do your inventory process. If you couldn't start that today, I know teachers are starting that today. If you couldn't do that today, that's the week that you need to get started and kind of organizing that. Talk to your principal. Tell them, you know, I really want to organize these kits. Can I not have a day with students? Maybe they'll let you do that. Maybe they won't. Maybe you have to just do it during your prep. But talk to your principals. It's an unusual year. They may be very flexible with you. So just ask. If they say no, they say no. Okay. Um, if you need to clean any supplies, ask your chief school engineer, ask them for some wipes. They, they have them, so you can ask for, for some. Following week, this is what we're talking about, my name and my identity, right? So that's something that you may want to think about looking at now to see how you can align a lesson that you do with what they're asking for. Again, principal may want you to just do that lesson. That's up to the building. I want everyone to know that we have an open art teacher session. I've already kind of shared that in email. I think I shared the Microsoft Teams link correctly, but when we get closer to this date, I'll make sure to resend it and hopefully we won't have any glitches. Um, you don't have to be there for the whole hour, though you can stay for the whole hour, but I split them into two. So if you need to come a little earlier, or need to come a little later, it's available to you. And then you can continue on the $300, $150 for dance and theater. Any issues with membership, dance teachers, any issues with requisitions, any, please do not send that to me right now. Hold that thought, hold that email, put it in draft, put Audrey's name on the top and you can CC me and then just wait till she returns. She will not be here until the 1st of October. So I, I, I beg of you to keep that on the side. I know it's all urgent and important. And unless it's something that's really, really an emergency, please hold that to the side until she returns. Okay. I'm also going to make some meetings. Uh, I'll be working on this in October. So in the middle of September, if you're part of, if you're part of any of these groups, advanced placement, BOADA, We'll do, again, open teacher forums. I'd be happy to do that weekly. I'll put that out there for anyone who wants to jump in. Uh, musical theater, we're going to start that again. And dance movement and mindfulness, those dates will be out shortly. And then we're going to end with this, end with this week in September, leading into the first week of October. And hopefully um, we'll be in a great place. I want to uh, mention that we will be doing uh, uh, events and exhibitions. And the first one will be the Peace Project. It will be a virtual exhibition, obviously. And what I really want to, um, I really want to uh, uh, invite and, uh, and request that our dance and theater teachers consider participating. Because you can connect my name and my identity to the Peace Project. You can connect CLRI to the Peace Project. And if you have something, maybe your student, maybe that's an asynchronous thing that they do, that they create, they, they take a topic and they create a, a one minute dialogue, a, a monologue, or maybe they do a, a, a new dance, whatever it is, you know, maybe they recite something, maybe, maybe they, whatever it is. But I would love to highlight the dance and theater uh, students in this also, because we all have something to say about peace during this really um, unusual, um, high 
intensity time. Okay, so that's that. So let's close that up. And uh, again, we're still working on the curriculum and uh, we're really excited about that. And I'll give a sneak peek if I can find it really quick. So working on fourth grade, and this is a background picture for one of our fourth grades. And you can see it looks kind of shifty, but strangely enough, it when it turns into a PDF, it's all perfect. I don't understand it. But this is what we're working on. So um, they're going to be great. I can't wait to see them finished. Uh, let me unshare. I think I can stop sharing. Um, if there's anything else that I forgot to talk about, um, you know, let me know. You can text me. You all have my number and my email, obviously. Um, just know that um, we are all in the same place. Some have more skills in one area than another, but this is all a new experience for everyone. It's not just the Buffalo Public Schools. It's not just Williamsville is going through their thing. Tonawanda is going through their thing. Uh, Chiktawaga is going through their thing and just know that we are all figuring this out. So if you can take a deep breath like we like to do, which I should have done starting this, and you can really just change that, that, that mental model that you have about things being exactly perfect. I know that at the end of the day, we are all here to serve children and that we're doing it the best we can through the art, through the arts then we're all gonna be fine, okay? So again, if you need some supplies for people who are on the cart and they just didn't have storage, let me know. Um, do your best. Um, I am here for you. Just wanna make sure that we all hear the same message. Um, and again, if there are any questions um, and concerns, please let me know. I want to help you. And sometimes I have answers, and when I don't, I try to find them. Um, but having them out in the air and causing chaos and confusion and agita for everyone is not always the best solution. So that being said, um, let me check my notes to make I have reading glasses now, so I have to make sure I think I have everything taken care of. So if uh, there's nothing else, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a great first day. It will be a great first day. Everyone will have a great first day. Breathe, um, use your mindful methods that we've kind of talked about a little bit. And again, know that I'm here for you. And uh, if you want to um, talk or just email me or you just need a voice, I am here for you. Hopefully I'll see you in a couple weeks during the teacher forum. And I will talk to you soon. Have a great, great weekend. Thanks, bye.